Terrence Metz. I'm the lead curriculum developer with MG Rush. We focus on structured facilitation <clears throat> with a strong emphasis on decision making, prioritization, and decision quality. In earlier lessons, we've looked at proper alignment to ensure that we have the right actions in place to reach our objectives. We've looked at assigning those actions in terms of who does what. And we're about the, at that point where we could wrap a meeting. Our suggestion is there's a couple of other activities highly worthwhile. <clears throat> Did you ever, ever leave a meeting and ask somebody out in the hallway, what do we agree to in here? And you end up like thinking almost the opposite. And that's a pretty scary thought. And a large of that has to do with rhetorical control, but notice we leave meetings thinking everybody must have uh, observed and felt and learned the same thing, and the answer is quite simply that's not true. We, in fact, should facilitate that, what we call homogenization of rhetoric. Wouldn't it be a good idea if your boss and my boss were the same thing at lunch in terms of what happened in that meeting? And the only way to ensure that is to provide some facilitated effort. We call that effort and that tool guardian of change. And Guardian of Change is conducted fairly simply and typically fairly quickly with a T-chart. As you know from prior lessons, grid lines, according to Dr. Tufty, should be placed in an off-color, receding in the background so your primary information can, in fact, pop out at you. We're going to put two titles in this T-chart. These titles could vary. But typically, good standards would be what are we going to tell our boss or what we might refer to as the superiors. And you could put peers, customers, or perhaps what are we going to tell other people. And those other people here are referring to, generally speaking, as stakeholders. If this becomes more complicated than simply two audience groups, you might, in fact, relegate this to a separate workshop step called a communications plan. In this particular case, we're simply going to conduct a facilitated effort to suggest, in fact, when you run into your boss at lunchtime in the hallway or in the elevator and they say, what did you accomplish in that meeting this morning, what are you going to tell them? And we're simply going to capture those talking points. Some people call a coffee pot. Other people call elevator speech to the extent that you can all agree these things are appropriate. You would be shocked at how frequent somebody says, boom, you don't want to use that word. Or why would we say that at this point in time? Guess what? They need a facilitator to make sure that we all agree. This is what we're going to tell our superiors when we leave this room. Likewise, when we run into peers, customers, or perhaps other stakeholders, what is the appropriate message when they say, what kind of progress are you making? Where are you at? Let's make sure everybody's hearing the same message. This is especially valuable where you have transliteration issues, meaning people not using English as a native language, and or you're dealing with many cultures across the world. Please consider guardian of change as a quality control me mechanism built into your meetings to make sure that we all understand we're saying the same thing. There's one more thing you might consider doing before you actually adjourn or wrap, and that's Obtain feedback on how you can be better. Now, as you know from workshop experiences, sometimes they have anecdotal forms or handouts and things, but for a normal one-hour meeting, two-hour meeting, <clears throat> that may be overkill. Instead, you might consider what is called a plus delta. Plus delta also relies on a T-chart. The titles will change. And in this case, the titles we'll be referring back to are the plus sign and the delta sign. And delta, of course, being a Greek sign for change, much like plus minus. As a tool, this has n numerous names out in the world. We've seen this displayed as benefits and concerns, opportunities for improvement, etc. We're not wed to the particular titles, but we are suggesting this is very important so that you get feedback that can make you better. Problem with plus delta, when conducted in a public environment like this, whether it's four people or 14, is that they pro typically provide creature comfort feedback. What did you like? We like the pre-read. We like the, uh, uh, the room. 
like the coffee, what would you change? Temperature was bad, lighting was awful, the food was awful, things that won't necessarily make you better. What we can do is suggest the following that turns this relatively common and yet somewhat impotent approach into a highly potent approach through the use of post-it notes. So our suggestion is as follows. Build your plus delta construct, take your easel, and move it by the entranceway. Let people know the meeting's over. Make sure that you've already pre-distributed the post-it notes and simply let them know that before they leave the room, you would like for them to write down one thing they liked about this meeting and one thing that they would change. And on their way out the door, simply deposit those comments in their respective columns. At this point in time, you have freed them up. Some people will bolt for the door. Other people will embrace the discipline to write down some good constructive feedback. Hey, did you know you said um 37 times? They're not going to share that good feedback with you in public because typically they don't want to embarrass you. But this is, in fact, the type of feedback that you hope to secure to make yourself a better facilitator. Don't forget, knowledge speaks, but wisdom listens. This is but one of hundreds of tools available to you through the FAST Professional Facilitation Training.